You guys requested it, so we've delivered. Welcome to part two of our Battleground Guide, a guide where we cover the talents, covenants, soulbinds, conduits, and legendaries, but specifically for Battlegrounds. In part one, we covered what would be considered the meta-rated Battleground specs. In this video, we're going to be covering seven specs which you still see, but are not really what you would consider meta. If battlegrounds are your thing, then you're in luck, as skill capped is the only place on the planet where you can watch and learn how the best rated battleground players in the world play their craft. Alongside our world class arena commentaries, we've also got a section dedicated entirely to RBGs, including an in depth look at the best strategy for every single map. On top of that, for prices as low as $4.99 a month, you also gain access to hundreds of WoW arena guides designed to improve your skill and rating in PvP as a whole. And with the money back guarantee, you have nothing to lose. So if you're looking to push rating this season and stay ahead of the competition regardless of bracket, be sure to check out skillcap.com slash wow today. To keep this video from being 30 minutes long due to covering 7 specs in one video, we're going to keep each section super condensed and to the point. To kick things off, we're going to be covering the only other real tank option that isn't a guardian druid, Vengeance Demon Hunter. Vengeance has some of, if not the highest mobility out of any of the tanks. The ability to leap twice with Infernal Strike in short succession combined with Soul Shape can allow you to build insane distance and kite incredibly well. To master this flag carrier, you're going to have to focus on awareness and using your spectral sight in order to avoid the enemy team's stealth classes, maximizing your mobility to kite around the base. Now, first off, let us be clear that you don't specifically roll Vengeance Demon Hunter. You'll play primarily Havoc, but on flag maps, swap to this spec. For your talents as Vengeance, they look like this. You've got Last Resort for that added safety net, Reverse Magic to remove crowd control or debuffs from both yourself or your defense healers, and the added crowd control of both Illidan's Grasp and Detainment to help you survive. The only real talent you should ever consider swapping is dropping the added crowd control from detainment to cleansed by flame. This is nice to have when you're worried about casters being the main source of the damage you'll be taking. As for your covenant, it's of course going to be Night Fae. The hunt is just as strong on vengeance as it is for havoc, plus the added mobility from soul shape is just too good to pass up on. Out of the three potential soul binds, the one we recommend is Dreamweaver, giving you an optimal route for conduits as well as giving you the added slow from soothing voice. Following the route you see on screen now, you'll want to put in Fellfire Haste for your Soul Finesse, Unnatural Malice, Growing Infernal, and Adaptive Armor Fragment as Potency, and lastly Fell Defender and Vicious Ink as your Endurance. Which leaves us with Stat Priority and Legendary Choice. For the latter, you've got two choices. Darkest Hour is really strong for the added safety net when you drop low, but due to its 2 minute ICD, you can swap to Cephas when it's down and get the added CC reduction. Then, for stat priority, you'll want as much versatility as possible for the damage reduction, with mastery being your secondary stat purely for the movement speed. Up next, we're taking a look at two melee specs, Arms Warriors, which we've seen have a resurgence in more melee focused compositions, and Feral Druids, which due to their new legendary are almost unbeatable on small skirmish maps. First up, we've got Arms Warrior. Arms Warrior has recently made a mark on the RBG scene as we've seen a more melee dominant meta, and Warriors are essentially the kings of team fights. Their consistent pressure coupled with abilities like Sharpened Blade make them the ideal target caller. As for talents, you're picking purely for team fight, taking the added AoE damage from Warbringer and Storm of Destruction for the AoE Mortal Strike and lower cooldown on Blade Storm, and of course, Sharpened Blade. Unlike in Arena, there is only one viable covenant for raided battlegrounds, and that's Kyrian. The reason for this is purely the Spear of Bastion. Having your Death Knight gripping multiple targets into a spear is your number one goal, plus the added lockdown on mobile flag carriers makes you a force to be reckoned with in offense. Then for your Soulbind top RBG warriors, prefer to opt for Forge Light Prime Mechanicos. The primary reason for this is the Effusive Anima Accelerator. This allows you to get your Spear Bastion back quicker for the more targets you hit. As you'll ideally have a Death Knight to stack targets up, this makes a lot of sense. Following the highlighted route, you're going to want Crash the Ramparts, Piercing Verdict, and Mortal Combo as your Potency, Safeguard as your Finesse, and Brutal Vitality as your Endurance. As Spear of Bastion is so key to your overall pressure, the legendary you'll be wanting to pick up is Elysian Might, but on certain maps and situations, it's nice to have a Leaper to at least give you the option to swap. Then lastly for Arms Warrior, your stat priority is as follows. Versatility, Critical Strike, Haste, and then Mastery. 
Going heavy crit versa allows you to take advantage of the increased critical strike damage of Elysian Might. As mentioned, the other melee we want to cover is Feral Druids. Feral Druids are not too common, and while you're not as strong as a balanced druid in a pure team fight, you make up for it by being a beast in small skirmish maps, like the off carts in Silver Shard and in offense on flag maps. For your talents, they're relatively the same as you would see in Arena. Most notably is the adaptation to pick up freedom of the herd. This allows yourself and your team a lot more mobility, which in a game mode like Battlegrounds is very important. One change you should make is on flag maps, swap your Strength of the Wild to Ferocious Wound. While Feral wants to be Necrolord in Arena, for Battlegrounds it's different. The go-to is Night Fae, which is good as both Balance, Guardian, and Feral all use Night Fae, meaning you can flex between. The reasons for this is obviously Convoke the Spirits. This for Feral is even stronger than it is for Balance for pure damage, and the mobility from Soul Shape cannot be taken for granted either. As for which Soulbind, the clear winner is Naya. The added mastery from Grove Invigoration just aids in bolstering your one-shots. Taking the path you see on screen now, you'll want Conflux of the Elements, Taste for Blood, and Carnivorous Instinct as your potency. Tireless Pursuit and Front of the Pack for the added mobility for your finesse conduits, and Well-Honed Instincts for Endurance. What makes Feral so strong in these small skirmishes is their go-to legendary of Celestial Spirits, giving you that one-minute cooldown convoke, which unlike Balanced Druid isn't heavily reliant on Incarnation, meaning you have kill pressure every single minute. If you're playing strictly for teamfight, then Circle of Life or Death would offer more damage, but in that case, you shouldn't be feral anyway. Finally, stat priority looks like this, prioritizing versatility and mastery above all else. If you're enjoying the guide so far and would like to see this format replicated for even more underrepresented classes, so things like Outlaw and Fury Warrior, let us know in the comments below and we'll make a part 3. Alright, so next up we're going to be looking at range specs. Both of these have had quite some showing in Rated Battlegrounds, but they're not what you would consider meta. Starting off, we've got Shadow Priest. Shadow is your quintessential teamfight spec, having high speed damage and good instant crowd control where you can set up kills for your team very well and a well placed Psy Fiend can single handedly win a teamfight. If you're interested in playing Shadow for RBGs, your talents are going to look like this. The key here is the combination of Ancient Madness and Auspicious Spirits, giving you a ton of AoE pressure. Then picking up Megalomania gives you another Void form to get Ancient Madness once again. One adaptation you can make is to swap out Megalomania purely on flag maps to pick up Void Shift. As for Covenant, you can honestly get away with playing both Venther or Necrolord, but with 9.1.5 around the corner, the best of the two would for sure be Necrolord, purely for the extra AoE damage coming from Unholy Transfusion, plus Fleshcraft is always overpowered. For your Soulbind, we recommend Bonesmith Hymir. The unconventional route we see on screen now is good for two reasons. Carver's Eye and the Marrow Gemstone. These two buffs amp up your damage far more than any other Soulbind, and there's no good third option for a Potency Conduit. For your Potency Conduits, you'll want Haunting Apparitions and Festering Transfusion. The three Endurance slots, you should take Charitable Soul, Condensed Animosphere, and Light's Inspiration, leaving the one finesse as Move with Grace. Due to being Necrolord, there is only one option for Legendary, and that's Pallid Command. This is just infinitely better than any other option. For stat priority, it's all about haste and versatility, with Critical Strike being your third best. Our second range spec, as mentioned, is Elemental Shaman. Elemental is actually very strong in RBGs, but just gets overshadowed by Balanced Druids, as most things do. But still, you'll see a lot of top teams running with an Elemental for their utility and burst damage. Talent-wise on Elemental, it looks like this. Pretty standard stuff that you would use in all PvP scenarios. The only thing you'll want to change here is, in rare cases, dropping Grounding Totem for Sky Fury if you're facing teams without anything important to ground, or you just want that extra damage. As for Covenant, once again, it's Necrolord. The added Lava Bursts from the Primordial Wave are just too integral for your burst, and the added Maelstrom generation is always nice, plus Fleshcraft is always going to be strong. In regards to which Soulbind, there's only really one option, and that's Plague Divisor Marilith, giving you access to Kevin's Oozling, as well as the CC immunity from Ultimate Form. For Potency Conduits, it's called the Flame and Tumbling Waves. There really isn't a great third pick, so most players run with Adaptive Armor Fragment. Then for your one Endurance, Condensed Animosphere. And Finesse, you'll want to take Thunderous Paws for the added mobility and Totemic Surge for the reduction on totems. 
As for which legendary to run, you've got two options. Skybreaker's Fiery Demise is good for pure team fighting damage, giving you a permanent fire elemental and extra flame shock damage. But on small skirmish or flag maps, you'll want to instead run Elemental Equilibrium. This just gives you a lot more burst damage. And last but not least, for stat priority, you'll want versatility and haste. Some critical strike is also really good if you prefer to do more burst damage. There are only really two dominant healers at the top end of Raided Battlegrounds, Discs and Holy Paladins. But if you're ever going to not run Double Discipline Priest, you'll instead probably be running with either a Mistweaver or Restoration Druid. Restoration Druids have seen a decent amount of positive changes over the recent months. This coupled with the meta slowing down slightly means we're beginning to see a resurgence. This coupled with the meta slowing down slightly means we're beginning to see a resurgence in their play rate. Being one of the only healers able to compete with disciplined priests at the top of the meters, but with added crowd control and the ability to float a lot easier. Their only downfall currently is their mana issues, but in short fights they can heal throughout any amount of damage. Talents as a Restoration Druid are very different from any other form of PvP. Instead, you're looking to maximize your AoE healing with pickups like Early Spring, Keeper of the Grove, and Flourish. There are some adaptations you can make here. For instance, you can pick up Abundance instead of Scenarian Ward where you need some more throughput. And Mighty Bash can be taken instead of Mass Entanglement for base maps. Unlike every other druid spec in Battlegrounds, the Covenant of Choice is Necrolord. The primary reason being that Adaptive Swarm synergizes great with Restoration Druid's healing. And as always, you get Fleshcraft to help bolster your survivability. Out of the three Necrolord Soulbinds, the best option is Plague Divisor Merilith, giving you some added healing from Kevin's Oozling and free mastery from Volatile Solvent. Then, with the route highlighted on screen now, you should select Evolved Swarm, Floral Recycling, and Unstoppable Growth as your potency. Innate Resolve and Well-Honed Instincts as your two Endurance. And lastly, Born of the Wilds for your Finesse. As for which Legendary to run, it's always Verdant Infusion. Extending your HOTS instead of consuming them makes this Legendary good in every circumstance. And on screen now, you'll see the most optimal stat priority, which is Versatility and Haste over all else. The second healer we want to touch on is Mistweaver Monk. Mistweaver's main niche is their ability to traverse the map quickly and keep up with flag carriers, while also having some incredibly strong cooldowns like Revival for teamfights. If you're interested in playing Mistweaver Monk, the recommended talents are these. Picking up Peace Weaver for that incredibly strong immunity and cooldown reduction, as well as the interrupt immunity from Zen Focus T. Out of all the available covenants, the one that best suits Mistweaver is Necrolord, giving you access to Fleshcraft and Bone Dust Brew. Bone Dust Brew gives you a huge boost to your mastery healing. Then for Soulbind Choice, it's all about Plague Divisor Merilith, simply for the added boost to mastery from Volatile Solvent and the immunity to crowd control with Ultimate Form, plus everybody loves Kevin. With the route on screen now, you forgo any finesse conduits and instead pick up Rising Sun Revival, Resplendent Mist, and Bone Marrow hops as your three potency. And then Fortifying Ingredients, Grounding Breath, and Harm Denial for your three endurance. Which leaves us with Legendary, and for this, you're going to want to craft Tear of Mourning. This just buffs your overall healing, as well as giving you a chance to spread Renewing Mists, giving you a lot more AoE healing in teamfights. As this build is centered around Gust of Mist, healing your stat priority is going to be all about versatility and mastery, with Haste and Critical Strike being a lot weaker. All right then guys, that's going to be our mini guide for setting up your class ready for Battlegrounds. As mentioned, this was part two where we covered some of the less meta specs. So if you missed part one, be sure to check that out. For now though, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed and we'll see you next time.